finding the area under a curve, we're going to, to, we're going to approximate the area under the curve f of x equals x squared, that is the area between y equals x squared and y equals 0, from x equals 1 to x equals 3. And we're going to use n equals 4 rectangles to do this. We can't, when you look at this area, you can see you can't use any formula from uh, classical geometry to find this area, that is the area from between this curve and y equals 0, this little piece here. And so we're going to label the um, starting point A and the ending point here 3, B. And what I want to do is I want to use four rectangles, because I know the, how to find the area of rectangles, to approximate this area. And I have to divide the x-axis into four parts and draw rectangles like this. So if I can find the area of these four rectangles here, one, two, three, four, then I have an approximation, anyway, of the area of, that I'm looking for. And notice I'm going to overshoot this by some somewhat here. So uh, my approximation is going to be uh, larger than the actual area. So I go down, the first thing I need to do is I need to partition the x-axis into four parts, and I just take b minus a, that's how far it is from here to here, and I divide it by the number of rectangles, n, that I want, and I end up with one-half, or 0.5. So my change in x, or delta x, is one-half, and that's, those are the bases of every rectangle. They're all the same. So here we have it all labeled, and notice I call uh, this first number 1, which is also a x naught, then x1, 1 1.5, x2 is uh, 2, x3 is 2.5, and x4 is 3. And I label them in that manner. Um, now, we know what the base is, how do we find the height? Well, we can find our heights from the function values of x sub i, or the function values of the x sub i's, right? In other words, if I want to find this first height, um, all I do is put 1.5 into the function, okay, and, uh, and which is just x squared. In other words, I square 1.5 and I find the height here. So this first rectangle has a uh, width of 0.5 or 1 half and a height of 2.25. And its area, the area of the first rectangle, 2.25 times 0.5 or 1.125 units squared square units there. That's how many square units that first rectangle is. Now we can find the area of each one in the same way and it gives us a little formula here. And the formula for the area is approximately f1 times delta x plus f2 times delta x plus f etc. And we get four products here which gives us the area of four rectangles. Always count them because sometimes you'll have too many. You might use x naught accidentally and we're using one through four. You could actually use the left side and use x naught through x three, but whichever side you use, you can only have four of them. So you have to have four of them. And so here it is, of course, uh, x one is <coughs> uh, 1.5. We square it and multiply times 0.5. We do the same with x2, which is 2 squared times 0.5, and x3, 2.5 squared times 0.5. And then, of course, there's x, uh, function of x4, or x4 squared times 0.5. And what do we end up with here? Well, here it is. We end up with an answer when we do the squaring and then multiplying of 10.75. So we say the area under our curve is 10.75. Now this kind of funny looking notation, if you haven't had the fundamental theorem of calculus yet, might, this might look a little strange to you, but really it does stand for the sum of the x squared times the change in x. And it's a notation you'll use a lot later on. It's called the definite integral. And that represents the area. Okay. The exact area, by the way, is about, is, is not about, it is 23 thirds, or about 8.67 um, square units.